So let's talk about adoption. For... I guess he didn't want to be in the video. <laughs> I disrupted his slumber. Let's talk about adoption versus fostering uh, and where I'm at with this process. So I have started a uh, the process of going through the foster care uh, system to adopt a child. I am completely open to that. Um, it is a much less costly route. And beyond that, uh, there is a lot of children that need support and families in the foster care system. However, I am also um, looking to do private adoption where you typically adopt a newborn baby through a private agency. Now, um, my thoughts on this are if I get placed with a foster child, um, I will continue doing the GoFundMe. And, you know, the goal of fostering is to reunify that child with the birth, biological birth parents. So, you know, many people advise you that along the route of fostering that you have to remind yourself that you're going into this to, to, to be a resource and a loving place for that child until they are returned to their family. Now, if the child or the child's biological parents do not get their act together or meet the requirements that the uh, courts say they need to do and meet, then that child becomes adoptable, which can take, from what I hear, nine to 12 months. And at that point, since you've had the child in your care, you become the first person uh, that the state allows to adopt the child if you want to. Now, my thoughts are, if <clears throat> I'm doing this GoFundMe campaign to help adopt a child, uh, and I then adopt the foster care child, what do I do with all this money from the GoFundMe campaign? And my thoughts are, if there's any outstanding, you know, things that need to be paid for, for the foster care uh, child or things like that, then utilize the GoFundMe for that because it is going directly to that child. But also, um, like I said in my initial video, the goal would be to then just turn around and give that money to another person that is looking to adopt and using GoFundMe. So, uh, you know, another, another thing is, let's say I do not go through the foster care, like they can't find me a kid or something like that, which is highly unlikely, I think. But let's say that that doesn't work out. You never know what God wants of you. Um, then I utilize the money for the adoption, private adoption, and anything extra, anything left over, if there is anything left over, would then go to someone else's GoFundMe campaign that is looking to adopt a child. So let's talk about the process of fostering and adopting privately. We'll start with fostering. When you foster a child, you reach out to either the city or an agency that is contracted with the city. Um, I believe there are some agencies that are not contracted with the city, uh, but the one that I'm working with is in fact contracted with the city of LA. I believe they told me that there's 43 or 46 agencies that are contracted with the city of LA to you know, facilitate the foster uh, situation or foster to adopt situation with children in the foster care uh, community. So you reach out to them. What happened with me is they came to my house and they sat down with me and did like an orientation and went over all of the different things that are required of me to move forward through this process, which are things like getting a medical health screening, getting a tuberculosis screening, um, or the getting a financial screening, getting a uh, my animals, my cat, my dog, 
their records, their shot records, making sure those are up to date, getting what, uh, my fingerprints done, getting an emergency contact, uh, making sure my home is like equipped for it and, 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 and put together and okay to house a child. Um, I had to get, have to still get CPR certified, which I'm doing next week. My water safety course, which, I'm, which I already did. So all of those things have to be done first. Once you get those documents together and they also run your name through, I guess, the Department of Social Services. I'm not sure where they're running your name, but they're running your name to make sure that you have no, you know, alerts against your name. So once that's done, and then once they get their live scan, which is your fingerprints, they call it a live scan, they will then go and put you through seven in-person classes. So I believe mine are going to be done at the agency, um, but I'm. But sometimes I think they come to your house as well. But uh, I think logistically it makes it easier for everyone involved that we just do it at the agency, which I'm okay with because during COVID it's like anything to get out of this house. <laughs> so you do seven in-person classes, and then once uh, or in tandem, I think you can do them in tandem you also do five online courses. So uh, you do your classes and then they, get, they do what's called a home study. And a home study is something that a lot of people are really, really uh, nervous about, I hear, as I've done my research online and YouTube and hear people talk about a home study and things like that. People get really scared. I'm not scared. Uh, I'm not worried about sharing with someone my life story because from what they told me, they start at like the day you were born, where you were born, and they ask you everything about your life, your family, your brothers or sisters, your parents, your everything about your life that you've experienced, that you've done all the way up to present day when you're doing that meeting. And my, uh, the woman that I'm working with, she's not a social worker, she's someone who uh, does like recruitment at the agency. She told me that it takes her 40 hours, one week, to write up my or anyone's home study report, which is just kind of crazy. And then that goes in your file. And then once that's done, boom, you are licensed to be a foster parent. Um, now, after that process, you could get a call the next day. You could get a call months from then. You never know when they're going to call you and they have a child to place with you. So that's like the foster care side. And then you have this private adoption. Private adoption is a much longer process. It typically takes 18 to 24 months before you are holding your child in your, in your hands. And... It's a much more costly expense as well because with private adoption or with foster care, the city is paying for attorney's fees and things like that. With private adoption, you're paying for all of that. So typically you'll go through a private adoption agency and the fees when it's all said and done can be, I've heard anywhere from 20 to 25,000 to 50 to 75,000 with 75,000 being on the higher end because there were some complications and things took longer. So really I've heard like 25 to 50,000. And the agency that I looked at, you know, they do so much marketing for you to find you a birth mom, a mom who's pregnant. Um, and just their fees alone for all of the marketing and the assistance that they provide you is $18,000. And then they go into the home study, which getting a home study done from a private company can be anywhere. I've, I've heard $2,000 to $5,000. Um, and then you have your attorney's fees, which is thousands of dollars. And then you have things that are basically where you're taking care of the birth mom. So the birth mom will have a lawyer and you'll have a lawyer and the 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 lawyers the lawyers will work out 
uh, where you as the adoptive parent will cover some of the living expenses for the birth mom. So you will cover things like, um, you know, it could be monthly food stipends, I guess. It could be their rent. It could be medical expenses. So those are things that are coming out of all of those fees. Um, some agencies build that into the end all fee and some of them um, don't. Some agencies even have, I think it's called Adopt America or something like that. Some agencies even have insurance where, because you could be paying for someone to live while they're pregnant with your baby that you're planning to adopt. And at the last minute they can say, no, I wanna keep this child because the birth mom always has the right to say, I don't wanna move forward with this. And that happens. So there's even agencies that have like insurance to where if you've been paying all this money for this mother to live, you know, and they bail out, they will kind of like roll that into your next, your next match. So, uh, you know, you can see the two different extremes in cost because with foster care, it could be a couple hundred dollars. Uh, I've spent some money already in getting prepared for this and getting documents together and getting fingerprinted and things like that, you know, and then obviously you have expenses while the kid's with you. Um, but private adoption is, is far more, far more costly. Um, it is a totally different experience as well because you are being matched with a, with a, um, birth mother and you get to say, I'd like to, I'm open to any type of race or, or gender or anything like that. Uh, or you can be more narrow and descript in the things that you're looking for in the, the human that you're, you're looking to adopt. Me personally, I don't care. All I care about is having a healthy baby. I can say that I feel more comfortable with a boy I grew up in a family of all boys. I don't really know how to relate to girls, so I think. Um, or maybe it's not that I don't know how to relate, it's just that it's more foreign to me. But I'm totally open to learning as well. So I believe that the right child will come into my life and I trust God in that. So I always say, I know the age. I am, whether it's fostering or private adoption, I'm interested in a newborn baby up to the age of one. And I, uh, you know, as far as race and gender, I don't really care. I don't care at all. Um, that doesn't mean anything to me. So that's the difference between, um, you know, foster care and private adoption. And what I plan to do with the GoFundMe um, campaign and should we reach that goal of the $30,000 um, like I've always said, I am working to put my own money into my ado adoption expenses, of course, but, um, you know, anything will help. So if you can donate anything at all, if, if my story is resonating with you, if you have questions for me, please put that in the comment below. If you've adopted before and you have tips on the adoption process, whether it's foster or private, please put that in the comments below. Um, and if you want to donate to the campaign, just go to gofundme.com forward slash Kevin adopts even $5 really, really will help. Thank you guys. Thanks for watching.